My name is Nathan Donnelly, and uh, welcome to my kitchen. I have got a few rabbits here that uh, I just shot. Three of them, actually, and I'm saving the last one here. I already um, skinned and parted out the other two. And uh, here's my, my last one um, right here. And I'm going to clean this guy out for you. I have one below here already parted out. It's probably out of the frame of the picture right now. But uh, I wanted to show how to, how to um, process small game, uh, which is pretty important. Taking whole deer is more difficult and you have a lot of meat to deal with um, in a survival situation. Small animals, rabbits are, are prime for, uh, for that sort of thing. And there's a lot of different ways to get them. So, in order to skin a rabbit, I'm going to show you the way. It's uh, late spring, early summer here right now, and um, the rabbit's coats, you see all the hair coming off of them. They're actually shedding right now, and there's no, there's no sense in saving the hide at this point um, like there is in the fall and the winter. So, these guys are, gonna, are getting done the, the quick way, and this is how you do it. Put a small incision. Uh, behind the shoulder blades, kind of, below the scruff of the neck, and insert your fingers in, pull the two halves of the hide apart like this. <clears throat> it goes fairly easy, you just have to be semi-aggressive about it, I guess, without being disrespectful. Um, so, grab onto the tail, and kind of twist that right off like so and I'm going to use my axe to speed up the process here because I have a limited amount of time to, to show you all the stuff I want to show you. First I want to do this rabbit then I want to show you how to brine it or at least how to cook it get it on the fire. I want to um, light the fire for you and then um, I forgot to already set my trap, but uh, I want to show you a trap and the, the video editing abilities of my equipment aren't, aren't such that I can, can uh, weave together a bunch, of, um, a bunch of different little videos here. So I'm trying to do it all at once and um, there's only 500 megabytes of, <clears throat> of room for the application video. So trying to do it all in about 15 minutes for you, which I think will fit inside the application. This guy got it right, right in the engine room um, <clears throat> with the 22, right through one side and out the other. And they're both so big I can't even tell which is the exit and which is the entry wound. Um, all three of these rabbits dropped like a stone as soon as they were, as soon as they were hit. Um, and I, uh, I don't believe they even knew what hit them. So that's how I like to take animals. Um, these are actually the first rabbits I've ever shot with a gun. I always use my bow up till now, but uh, I got a little 22 the other day that um, I wanted to test and one of my clients is just, her poor place is overrun with rabbits. So I went out with my 22 that I recently sighted and, and um, Took all three of these rabbits inside of a minute and a half, probably, and uh, ran out here as quick as I could to make sure I don't have any sand in my fingers to gut them and show you guys how it's done. All right, this is a, a milky doe. She's actually was feeding some young. That's what that white stuff there was. <clears throat> well, that knife fell in the sand, so it's a good thing I have a backup. Next, you want to, um, after you've gotten all that stuff off, beheaded it, the feet are off. Um, rabbits are, are one of the few animals you actually skin all the way before you gut them. Um, it's, it's just easier that way. But uh, next, you want to make another similar incision to the one you made in the back, right here at the uh, bottom of the sternum. And Pardon my lack of a kitchen counter while I'm doing this. Sometimes you just got to make do with what with what you got. And uh, this old log is, is what I got. So 
<clears throat> you want to be real careful doing this so that you're not uh, puncturing any of the internals there. There's a lot of weird juices and whatnot that'll ruin the meat and uh, you don't want to do any of that. So I'm putting my fingers in there and keeping everything cleared. You notice I've got only one glove on. It's not because I'm trying to be Michael Jackson. Um, sometimes rabbits carry tularemia. It's a disease that can be spread um, through an opening in the hand. And my left hand has got a, a slight cut in it from, from a few days ago when I was using a, uh, a machete. It's not a machete cut. It's not that serious, don't worry. But there's uh, most of the internals, the liver and the entire digestive tract, or minus, minus this bit here that is um, and then you want to get in here to the uh, the old engine room which I did a pretty good job of of wiping out that's the lungs and the heart and a lot of the blood that was pumping through that heart and <clears throat> it's the rear of the digestive tract all this material here um, it's really still useful. It looks gross and all that. I'm not personally going to eat it, but we're here on the coastline and this whole place is crawling with Dungeness and uh, red crab, red rock crab. And um, all of this is fantastic bait for catching crabs. You can bring this out into some shallow water, weight it down with some rocks, wait a few hours for all the crabs to come to the scent and pick them up with your bare hands if you know how to grab a, cra a crab. Um, I have eaten many hundreds of crabs, mostly I caught from my kayak with traps, but um, I have uh, also caught them with my bare hands just right off the rocks, and um, they're so good. <laughs> There's no point to, uh, to not trying to get them, and uh, any, in the wild you come across a dead animal, you had better utilize it. Maybe not for your own diet, but uh, you know, it's got, it's got more than just food value for yourself in it. So that so I'm pushing the hip back and um, looking for the hip socket here because that's where I'm gonna make my there we go this is the one of the uh, hind corners here and it's a nice big hind quarter this is about as big as wild rabbits get on our island here I've got a bed of alder leaves down there to keep everything up off the of sand. <clears throat> and, um, oh, there's the kidney. Somehow I missed that guy. Put that in there. And break that hip socket. So you're not having to. Cut through a bunch of bone with your knife, which will dull your edge, obviously, real quickly. Not good. And just parting out the hindquarters here. I can do this without dropping the carcass. That would be good. That's close. Another rear leg. That's most of the meat in a rabbit is just two hind legs. Obviously, they're pretty big on a rabbit. They, they jump around a lot. Um, the rib cage on this guy is pretty, pretty jacked up. If I were in a real survival situation, it looks like I broke about a half dozen ribs, maybe seven or eight, and um, and a leg. That thing came through and broke a leg on its way out too. So um, we're gonna save. We're going to save um, all of the back strap, which is, or the saddle, as it's often re referred to. Is that little organ? Um, when you're when you're doing rabbits, you want to look at their liver when you take it out. This one looked really healthy, but uh, that's uh, that's a sign of the tularemia if it's got spots on it and and little white white areas. Here's the saddle. And uh, there's not a whole lot of meat in the rib cage. If I was starving, this would go in the stew pot, as gross as it looks. But it's got a lot of blood damage. This is going to go to my dogs and chickens uh, if it doesn't go to the crabs, so it won't be wasted. But um, and I like to chop off just the back of the hip bones there. Um, 
And there we have it. Now that I've gotten both of my knives all sandy, I'm going to go take them down to the water real quick <clears throat> and rinse them. Um, next, I'm going to get a fire lit here. I've already got the fire lay put together, and I'm going to move the camera for this. This is my camp for the evening. That's a 10 by 10 tarp. This is a, a tarp formation called the plow. Can't remember who named it, but it's an apt name. It sh it's shaped very much like a plow. This is my fire tripod with a grill on it that when covered with leaves like those or all of that there um, can be turned into a smoker if brought up off the ground a little bit more. Um, the shelter is pretty roomy inside. It's 100 square feet of coverage, so it's bigger than any tent I own. These are some items that I've actually made or are making. This is a a Pacific U um, hatchet handle that I'm carving out right now. I was really gifted with finding a down Pacific U the other day. This is a rawhide hatchet cover for um, the hatchet I was using on that rabbit. This is a western red cedar spoon that I carved out uh, last summer. Get a lot of use out of in the kitchen. It's, it's just like a shape of spoon you never see that you can buy and it's so useful. So, And then this is a cuxa that I carved last summer out of alder as well. Um, it's a traditional fin, uh, Scandinavian um, drinking cup. And this here is some cordage that I had made out of that stuff there. That's a bunch of roots, but on top of the roots is um, this wonderful bark off of a honeysuckle vine, which if you can see that vine right there, I actually just lifted this right off of it. And I started making cordage out, out of it a few days ago, and it's just amazing stuff. It's very strong, really easy to make, and um, that's my camp. So, let's get this fire started. Okay, so I'm going to light that fire. Um, I'm going to try and do this in one single strike of the uh, ferro rod, because it's really, um, it's really a pretty nice fire lay. I've got a little bit of... of um, birch bark in there and several ocean spray um, feather sticks that I made. This is a feather stick. You see that up clear? This is a stick that I've just cut a bunch of curls in. You can see it one end. It's just a normal stick and the rest of it's been turned into tinder. So there's about four more of these in here and uh, the fuzz, there's a fuzzy stuff in there which is uh, the fuzz off of a cattail, cattail fluff, lichen, um, some of that honeysuckle vine bark, and um, and this fire should should take. I'm going to see if I can't get it to go with just a single strike from my ferro rod. Well, guess that uh, cattail fluff didn't want to burn so well. Can't win them all. Is that one gonna take? All right. Third time's a charm. <clears throat> Remember, you can build a man a fire and keep him warm for a night, or you can light a man on fire and keep him warm for the rest of his life. <laughs> all right. So that's going well. This grill here is not really needed right now because I'm going to be using my pot. So I just push all those back like a like a window blind and make sure my ferro rod goes right back into its little holder. That thing never gets set on the ground. Um, I'm sure we all know why at this point. Let's see here. I have got another rabbit already brining in this pot here. This is mostly seawater. And uh, rabbits really nice. It, it, wild rabbits tend to be um, fairly tough when they are when they are wild, essentially. So they're not like a domestic rabbit. And if you can soak them and brine them for a while, this guy's been in for about an hour. Uh, a day and a half would probably be a lot better. But um, we're not going to be picky. So we have 
I wrap it in here. I'm going to dump out some of the brine and replace it with fresh water. This is bloody water, so I don't want it smelling up the whole camp. Um, I don't live where there's bears right now, but um, it's always a good precaution to take. Um, I did already see a mink come by earlier, and uh, we don't need the raccoons and the minks and every other little predator in town coming our way. So where did I put my little pot hanger? Right over here. This is a pot hanger that I made as well, I didn't show you earlier. But this works by hanging your pot handle in this hook here. And then all these various hooks along the way are adjustments for getting it higher and lower off of the heat. And it hangs off of a piece of cord at the top of my tripod here. So, like so. Hmm. Well, I guess we can... Luckily it didn't fall in the guts of the, <laughs> the rabbit. Um, there's a good fire going. All the other parts are working very well. I'm, uh, I'm stewing this rabbit. And in general, if you're doing something for survival, you want to stew it. You want to put it in a pot full of water if you have that option available to you. Um, or you might even want to... Um, if you don't have a pot, you can burn out a log if you've learned how to do that and uh, use hot stones to boil your food. But instead of grilling the rabbit on these sticks here, I'm stewing it because when you grill anything, rabbits are already really lean and any little bit of fat that's on them is just going to drip down into the fire. And that's calories that I could be eating. Um, so it's important that uh, every calorie is conserved and um, that's the best way to do it that I'm aware of. Those flames will center out a little bit as it burns down, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit more water in that pot. Because we're already boiling, that's a good fire. And my backpack. Let the rabbit maybe brown for a little bit, but I'm just going to put, put the water in there, just enough to cover them and then we'll put the lid back on. Now let's see if we can set up this trap while that's cooking. Um, this area here, I'll show you around over here. Behind my tent, there's these, all these little mudslides on the coast here because the, um, the winter storms really ate up this beach this last year. And this is all a big clay deposit as is this over here and if you look at them closely this is the easiest way back up into the woods from the beach and everything likes to visit the beach in the morning and it is covered in raccoon tracks deer tracks otter tracks all over and they all lead right up into there and um, go off into uh, different directions so there's another one of those clay deposit kind of animal highways right here and um, these are really good areas to identify. You can see lots of deer tracks. Um, we zoom in a little closer then you'll start seeing a lot of uh, raccoon activity, otter activity. Um, ideally what I'd be going for here is raccoons. They're um, here they're good eating and they're just small enough to really deal with um, in this kind of a situation. So I'm gonna set up this great big stone with those sticks on top of it is going to be a figure four deadfall trap. And um, let's see if we can't get it all put together before my batteries die because I'm showing that they're getting a little low. So underneath this larger boulder, there is a flat stone, this piece of granite right here that I placed under there already. A figure four trap consists of three parts, a post, a top part that uh, holds the rock up, I don't know what that's called, the lever I guess, and then a trigger stick with a, something like a fork on the end of it to, to um, hold on to some bait. So, 
ideally you're going to have a hard flat surface and a hard flat surface and bam you want your weight to be about five times heavier than the critter you're trying to trap and you want it to fall flat to flat like two clapping hands so let's just stand that up for now and get our mechanism put together here I did a another video on trapping that is going to be on that YouTube link that uh, is going to be in my application so go ahead and check on that I, I, I go into the details of trapping a little bit more and I just don't have the time to be detailed in this particular video but